What is up, Ancestral Minions and Carnivores or would-be Carnivores? Colin here for a video in my comments. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a while where I want to respond to some comments and just talk about them, maybe even actually physically respond to some of them myself to give you an idea, you know, of some of the more nuanced ideas and answers and things about all this type of stuff, carnivore health, etc. I think this video will be informative and useful, and I'll probably start putting these out once a week, maybe even turn it into like a weekly carnivore cor corner or something like that, but we'll see, okay? So let's, let's just start. All right, so here's one on how the carnivore diet cured my back pain. I filmed this months ago. So I'm literally five days in the carnivore diet. I dealt with pack, back pain, etc. I couldn't move my legs. Seems pretty severe. So literally five days in a carnivore, and I kid you not, my back pain is at about a one and improving every day. I haven't felt this much flexibility in years. It's crazy. I think you were spot on. Inflammation, inflamed gut, impinging on the spine. Good to know someone else out there has had the same result. As more of these comments keep coming in, I think it's safe to say we are on to something. Is it one word? I think on to is one word. Okay. All right. Four cells carnivore diet. Which one is right for you? I lost 14 pounds in two weeks. I started with egg, seafood, added chicken, etc. I was able to lose weight slowly while I was active. Fast forward to the lockdown. It blew up my less activity in the same diet. Not the diet for me. Also made my bet my my breasts gigantic. <laughs> okay. Before the weight gain, I guess maybe too much progesterone. But do you have to omit all vegetables every day? I love broccoli. Don't let anyone fool you with the typical diet dogma of it having to be all or nothing. Your best diet is the diet you can build around your biology and that is sustainable. As much as I don't like that, I don't like the idea of like saying, oh, as long as it's sustainable, or, or the typical thing you hear from like bio lame and some of those other guys in the calories movement, the fitness community, most of them that are take drugs, that take steroids and then post on Instagram and say, buy my plan, buy my supplements. Like it's literally a joke. So I don't like the advice of the best diet is one you can sustain because that just opens the doors for people to make all these really bad excuses about a, about a diet that, oh, I sustain because I like it and I can't sustain this because I can't. Like it just creates really bad narratives and labels and it makes it so that people don't actually put in the work because guess what? The fake food environment that is a result of subsidized, mass-produced foods, big pharma, big food, like all this nonsense. These things are toxic. These things are not good for you. They're not good for your kids. They're not good for long-term health. They're not things that should be in any diet with any kind of consistency. I'm gonna have pizza from time to time. That's fine. I'm gonna eat at restaurants from time to time. That's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is justifying this idea that like I like bread so much and I just can't sustain it without bread. So I'm gonna buy Wonder Bread and keep a loaf at the house and eat it with every meal. Like the amount of nonsense that people convince themselves of is rooted in a lot of these bad ideas. And I see it all throughout the fitness community. I see this a lot throughout fitness. People that can pretty much eat whatever they want. They train four hours a day. They're taking drugs they're doing certain things. And then they go out and give nutrition advice as if what they did is what everybody else should do. I cannot think of a bigger scam today other than maybe big food and big pharma. Those are really big scams. Or 2020, what's going on in that? That's a big scam. But it's one of the biggest scams in the nutrition space. So this one's on a good, a really good video that you should watch that a lot of people didn't watch because it's not carnivore-based, but it's how to fix your sleep schedule in three days. Natural tips that actually work. These are good tips. I sleep eight to five hours every night. I actually slept 10 hours last night because I was feeling tired yesterday. My room blocked out with EMF blocking curtains. That's a good idea. I also have an orange light. There's no TV or devices. So what I do is I have these little switches that I'll put a link to. Turns off all of the drawing of power between the device and the wall. So there's no EMF leakage. What you'll find is if you plug something like a TV in, a lot of times these will have a, a low kind of dose of electricity that will still be running through the current. Like on this, the monitor even. If I keep that plugged in, there's always either a red or blue light to kind of signify it's off or on. One, you want to get rid of that light. It's really bad for your biology. But two, it's the EMF leak leakage that goes from this being plugged into the wall. And because there's a constant stream, and I'm not super expert on this stuff, guys. I have a very baseline uh, understanding. I do know that if there's any risk whatsoever, I want to remove it so it's not a big deal. I get these little things that go to the wall first, plug it into the wall, then you flip the switch off when it's off, and then you put it on when you want to use it. And so that way I can keep my TV plugged in by my bed, but I flip the switch off here and I completely kill the current. Super easy hack that you can do for pretty much all your devices and outlets around the house. So don't drink coffee after 3 p.m. Yep. 
Don't eat two hours before sleep. I tend to do that. I don't, I don't think we figured out the eating before bed thing. I think there's a lot to it. I think there's a lot we don't understand about it. I think people are different. I think it depends on your activity level, what you're eating, et cetera. But like eating protein before bed for a lot of us could probably be an amazing thing because we're probably not eating enough protein as it is. And I notice that when I'm training a lot, I tend to wake up at night and then I'm just like in a zombie state where I go and I just like eat a lot of times carbs or cheese or just things that are easy. And I have literally no self-control whatsoever because I'm half asleep. That can definitely stifle your results. So if you're like a zombie eater, like I tend to be when I'm being extra active and maybe I'm not eating enough during the day, then making sure you eat something before bed just to prevent that could be a good strategy. Hi, I can see you have a huge excitement for carnivore. Same here. I've been eating this way for eight months now. Not 100%, but mostly meat-based, a little bit of avocado, some berries. That's pretty much what I do. Definitely stop eating broccoli, spinach, kale. Yep. Green juice every morning. Nope. Uh, yeah, that's, that's another thing. If you're watching this and you have any results with this way of eating or, or yeah, literally, if you have any results, share it with people. They're not going to like it. Sometimes people might even try to argue with you. You don't have to engage. But you can simply tell them, I was my own doctor, my own scientist, my own experiment. And I did an experiment and these things got better. So if you look at the literature and some of the dogma around these things, they would tell you to, oh, well, you got results, but you can't do that long term. Okay, this this is this is something that is so backwards and absurd, it's not even funny. I gotta take a moment to think about this. Okay, so if one day you eat carnivore or anything that improves your markers, you could literally do blood tests, you could do hair tests, you could do everything. If you get better here from doing this thing, right? But you look at some of the research and some of the experts and they would tell you, well, you can't do that. It's not sustainable. So you got to go back to here. So you go back to this diet. Like, let's say you did that. And then all your numbers and your health conditions and all the things come back. Over here, you're better. And every metric, you feel better, you look better, you lose weight, everything. You know, your numbers are better, your minerals, your everything's better, right? Like that, which is pretty much what happens when somebody goes carnivore. Why would you go back to markers where you're sicker? I'm, I'm waiting for an answer. Why would you do that? Because of some really bad research and really bad dogma that has yet to adapt to what we actually know. That's why you should do it. So you could feel good that big daddy pharma and sick care and big daddy government is taking care of you. You're doing what they tell you to do. It makes no sense. Every day you wake up, if you can do something that improves your health markers, you should do that. And then test regularly. And if that changes, then you edit something, audit something, test something. And you constantly go to that place where you have the best markers, you feel the best, you look your best, you're functioning, certain things go away. It's unbelievable that People can't understand this logic because they're so addicted to the drip of being told what to do. They put so much blind faith into doctors and experts, even though doctors, experts, pharma, sick care are all funded by big corporations and there's a profit motive. Starting week seven of Relaxed Carnivore, but can't see any weight loss, or rather my weight goes up and down within six pound range. I eat mostly grass-fed beef, bacon, cheese, and eggs. You're eating a lot of fat here. My macros are anything from range 20, 50% protein, 50 to 75% fat, aiming for 35% protein as a constant. Utilize IF, IF, and lots of walking. And make sure you are eating a lot of clean omega-3 sources. Eggs can be suspect. Cheese and bacon can be suspect because these foods are harder to get a solid omega-3 ratio balance. So grass-fed beef, yeah, still can, still can be issues there. Uh, bacon, really hard to get balanced. In fact, bacon generally has more omega-6 anyways, from my understanding. And so it's hard to get really clean bacon. Cheese, again, most cheese is not really great. And even if it is great, it's going to have more omega-3, but it's still going to have more omega-6, right? It's one of those omega-6 heavy foods. I'm pretty sure. I have to look that up, but off the top of my head, it sounds right. Uh, eggs, yeah, you can get omega-3 eggs, but... They might have other things. They might have eaten corn, soy, whatever. We're to the point where we can't even eat eggs from chickens that eat corn or soy because we can literally feel the effects. It, it bothers me. It bothers Allison. 
all right? So with this, it's definitely something that I would recommend she aim for way more protein. So 35%, just keep that a constant. And then maybe even consider adding a little bit of uh, veg or fruit or berries or like something like that to increase satiety while reducing calorie intake. 1300 calories is next to nothing. That's actually really low. Um, I'm actually gonna tell her, consider upping cal Increasing calories, 1300 is super low. Your body does not like burning off fat when it is in a hypocaloric state. Hypocaloric, okay? That's another thing. This idea of calorie restriction, eating less calories for long, a prolonged period of time can be counterintuitive to losing weight. People don't really grasp that. You wanna kinda of get to that point where you're eating enough nutrition, enough calories to get your nutrients in, to get your repair in, right? To get your kind of, you know, maintenance in. And then you want to use things like fasting, multi-day fast, things like that, eating more protein, you know, filling up with satiety and having less calories and use those type of strategies to get your, your weight loss, right? Because if you go super low in calories, your body is going to try to conserve energy as much as it can because it believes that it's going to die if it doesn't. That's why this idea of calories in and calorie out is all that matters makes no sense. Humans would never have survived in the wild if that's how it worked. If every day that we didn't get enough calories and we just started wasting away and burning fat stores, it doesn't work that way. In fact, a lot of what your body does is it will burn off muscle because muscle is a very metabolic expensive tissue to keep on your frame. So if you're in an environment where calories are scarce, your body's saying, hey, muscle mass, you got to go because you're expensive. It will then even potentially go to organs. It will then even potentially downregulate certain functions in your body because certain metabolic function in your body and organ function is calorically expensive. And all the calorie restricted research they did back in like the, the 1900s, they did some early research for this. I think it was around World War II or before or after they were trying to understand rations and calories and things like that. All the subjects that were severely calorie restricted could barely think straight. They couldn't form thoughts because their brain <laughs> basically shut down. They didn't have energy. So your brain goes into survival mode and it just barely move, barely sit up, barely speak, barely think. That's gonna be it for today's video. We all obviously have tons and tons of comments that are gonna keep coming in. So I'll do another one next week. Let me know what you think about this. If you wanna see more like this, or if you have any specific questions that you want me to address or comments that you want me to address, you know, obviously leave it on the video and I'll cover it in the next one. All right, so like, subscribe, share if you want to. If you don't, take some action, do something with this information. Get better, get healthier, help your family, help your friends. Hey, hey, Colin here, got a freebie for you. Click on the button below to go to the ancestralmind.com and download the seven principles of living wild. This is a short PDF that's got some of the main principles such as real food, sleep, movement, and a couple more that are gonna help you live more ancestrally in accordance with your genes.